Hi there, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at sending information from Rhino and receiving that in eTabs. More specifically, we're going to be looking at some modeling principles. So we can't just take any old geometry, send that to Speckle and expect some magic to happen and have that then received in eTabs. We're also going to be looking at some Speckle mappings. As mentioned in the first video, there are quite a few limitations in this Rhino to eTabs connections particularly when it comes to the signing of properties to 3D objects. There are some workarounds, hence why we're introducing the speckle mappings, and that is a neat way to get at least geometry from A to B. But let's have a look at the or at some modeling principles. So here we have a wall object, or an analytical representation of a wall with two door openings. On the left-hand side, we have the single surface representation, and on the right hand side we have the exact same thing however we've just split the surface at every vertex of the door or of each opening so on the left hand side it's a single surface and on the right hand side we have eight surfaces representing the same thing i've already gone and sent this to our rhino test submodel, and we're going to try and receive that now on etabs we'll get to sending and receiving later on in this video but we'll just go ahead now and try and receive both of these definitions by using our speckle connector so we have our tutorial project here opened up and i'm going to try and receive there we go if we try and receive we'll see that only one of the wall definitions have pulled across if i open up the connector again and look at our report we'll see that that single surface definition has failed now this could be a speckle thing or an ETAB thing, but that's where a bit of knowledge of the host application comes into play. So for ETABs, an example, and stand me, I stand to be corrected, but if I try and draw this wall with two door openings using the polygon, I won't be able to do that. So if you can't do it in the ETABs UI, you won't be able to send and receive it in ETABs in a different way. So we need to be modeling in Rhino in a way that makes sense and that we can actually receive it in ETABs as well. What is actually good with this approach is that we're also conforming to how PN spandrels or how wall objects are usually manually meshed or split in ETABs in order for us to be able to assign our peer and spandrel assignments. So let's jump back into our Rhino and we can open up our entire analytical, uh, our entire analytical model. So if I open that up, You'll notice the first thing that happens is two things pop up. We have, because we've installed our connectors, we have the speckle mapper popping up as well as the normal speckle connector. I'm just going to close those for now and we can zoom out and there we have an entire analytical representation of our building. So for beams and columns, we have 1D straight lines and for floors and walls, we have 2D planar surfaces. And if I then jump to our speckle project, we see here, that's the project we created in the first video. And I want to send just maybe two frame objects to our test and see how that pulls through. So if I go back into Rhino, I can type in speckle to get the connector again. The project should appear automatically here. If not, we can add a project by project URL or ID. So to show you what that is, if we go back to our project and we're in our tutorial Rhino and Grasshopper to eTabs project, we see, if we look at the top here, we have in the URL, we have projects forward slash and a ID. That is our project ID. So I could also copy that. And if I go back into Rhino, we can add the project by that ID or URL. But we already have it so there it's automatically going into it and we want to we have two options here we can either send information or receive and we're looking to send and we want to send to our rhino test submodel which we created so if i select that i'm not going to send everything i think that's a bit computationally heavy so if i just select two columns and we say let's do by selection and we set the current selection of, and it picks it up two objects, we can try and send that. So that's done relatively quickly. If I then go back to our speckle project, 
and I go into our test folder, we see that there are the two lines that we'd sent. So now we can try and receive those in eTabs. So if I go back into eTabs and I'm just going to delete this, we can open up our connector again and I can try and receive these two lines now. So we can receive, those are the two elements, that will be the latest version. I can try and receive that. And we see that nothing happens. Now this isn't a bug from a speckle point of view. This is a, it's got to do with the, the speckle schema objects and the definition of this geometry which we've just sent. So here we see a speckle type which is quite important to keep in mind. So this speckle type is only of type line and we can't say that every single line is a frame object. So for some structural softwares you have walls or floors represented by bounding curves. So we don't want to say that every single line object is a frame because we can also have lines representing grid lines, etc. So we need to be able to give Speckle some more information to say, hey, this is not just a line. We can do that by assigning some mappings. So if I, I'm going to close the connector now. So if I open up Speckle mappings by typing in Speckle, there are mappings we get the speckle mapper. So if I make that a bit bigger, we can click on the two columns previously and automatically we have some options here and we're in the two Revit mapper. So we can map these two lines to, for example, a Revit default column. And if I apply these mappings now, I'll show you what that's done. If we go into our another line object and we inspect the user attributes we see that's empty however if we click on the one of the columns we just applied a mapping to we get these two new keys and these values so if we look to send these objects again so if i open up speckle and i look to send these two objects again that's done so we can open up our project and we have a new version created. We see here that we have three versions. If I just click on that, the first version was that with the walls um, from the modeling principles. And then here we have what we've just created. So if I now open up that, we see it is still of geometry dot, of speckle type objects dot geometry dot line. However, we have a additional speckle schema property. So if I now try and receive this in eTabs, opening up the connector and trying to receive that. We get the columns coming through. However, we haven't in Rhino assigned any cross-section type. So it just defaults in eTabs to these structural steel columns. Now for our example, we're looking at creating a reinforced concrete structure. So we need to be able to define the cross-section types, not just have everything default to a steel column or a steel beam. And that's what we're going to look in at the next video. We're going to be introducing Grasshopper and we're going to be building up our analytical model and then finally sending a complete model from Grasshopper and receiving that in eTabs.